Nephilim Free puts out this video making an irreducible complexity argument for the Emerald Cockroach Wasp. Way to be with the times, Neff. You don't mind if I call you Neff, do you? You know, irreducible complexity has been uh, pretty much a failed argument for intelligent design, more or less since Behe put it out there. But hell, well, let's, let's, let's go ahead and assume that it's a valid argument anyway. So, you're using this irreducible complexity argument, which is normally a biological argument. Something to do with a complex system of anatomy. And you use it as an argument to describe the behavior of the emerald cockroach wasp. But hey, you know what, I'll let you slide on that one too. It's a pretty simple organism, and more than likely, it's not a learned behavior. It's completely instinctual. It's genetic programming, just a series of switches telling it to do this. So, hell, I'll let you slide on that one, too. Because, see, the reason I'm going to let you slide on these two things is because even with letting you use an irreducible complexity argument on the behavior of the emerald cockroach wasp, you're still wrong! There's only two things that this wasp does that is unique to its species. The first is the second sting, which is used to provoke the grooming response in the cockroach, make it a little bit more controllable. And the second is the trimming of the antenna of the cockroach, which some people are assuming might have something to do with reducing the amount of toxin within the roach so that it doesn't die prematurely. I personally think that's bullshit. I think it's biting on its antenna and it just breaks off accidentally. So we'll just ignore that one completely. <laughs> Actually, you know what? No, what? Let, me, let me change my mind on this. Let's not ignore that one completely. Um, it could just as easily be uh, that the trimming of the antenna reduces the cockroach's ability to sense, which would just further make it easier to control how this particular activity of the emerald cockroach wasp came into play. Uh, I'll explain it along with basically the same principle of the secondary sting. Let's go with the second sting. See, all of the other functions of the wasp, the stinging in the first place, the feeding it, or burying it, feeding it's young, letting it's young, eat it alive, all of this other stuff, and even the fact that it hunts cockroaches, period, is all found within other wasps or other insects, period. Some of those things are found among other insects. The stinging to keep it from being able to flee is something that all kinds of predators use. I mean, snake venom is notorious for being along those lines. This is, none of this stuff is, you know, magical. We've got all of the information as to what steps led from point A to point B. All of that is reducible. None of it is irreducible. It's <laughs> it's a failed argument right there. But we have this second sting that is unique to the species. Well, let's say that my wrist is the precursor to the modern day emerald cockroach wasp. I, I noticed in your comments on this video that you know you were making some 
argument of it couldn't be done by trial and error, as if wasps have the higher brain function capabilities of being able to carry out trial and error. Um, it's all instinctual. It's programmed in there. It's in their DNA. So let's say we've got your 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 precursor. Okay. Does all of the things that all these other wasps do. It stings. It brings food, lays eggs, the whole the whole bit. But it doesn't have the secondary sting characteristic. Well, all it takes is a few mutations. I say this predecessor has mutations that all have different functions for a secondary sting. Let's say this one stings it in the end. This one stings it somewhere else it's completely useless. This one stings it and kills it. Whatever. You get the one that stings it and it provokes the grooming response. This does make the cockroach very controllable. So, this one wasp, with this one mutation, is able to lay more eggs that successfully survive, whereas all the other ones might survive in their lifetime, but they're not going to have anywhere near as much success. This one has lots of success. It's a survivor because it has the best adaptation out of these other ones. Natural selection weeds these other ones out. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. So that all you have left is that one. That's it. It's not an irreducibly complex behavior. It's completely reducible. Oh yeah, and you can go ahead and rate my one star, because that's all you creationists can do. Maybe leave a comment. Those amuse me. A lot. Feel free. Hell, if you even want to, make a video response. I don't have to hide myself from criticism. <laughs>